We go now to Vince Colonnais, editorial director at The Daily Caller. Vince, great to have you back on. A lot to unpack here, but first, let's start with the Republican primary race. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since former President Trump's indictment on federal charges. Add a new NBC poll shows that 51 percent of Republican voters would choose him. That is up five points from April. Vince, what do you make of all of this? This, this shows how little trust in our institutions Republican voters across the country have, because with each new indictment, with each new legal proceeding against Donald Trump, it only increases his standing in the polls. And my suspicion has been and continues to be that there are Democrat prosecutors around the country who are doing it for this very reason. They have it in their minds that advancing Donald Trump in the primary by bringing an indictment will help him win among Republicans who feel set upon, who feel besieged. And meanwhile, they think it'll damage him enough that he doesn't prevail in a general election. Uh, if that's the motivating factor, and of course, none of them will admit this outright, that is election meddling. Uh, so, so that's unfortunate. But as a, as a key fact here, uh, every time there is yet another assault on Donald Trump inside the legal system or outside of it, it only helps his standing in the Republican primary. And this is yet again proof of that. Yeah. And as Owen mentioned earlier uh, this past week, and of course, as we know, Mark, the one-year anniversary of the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Vince, I'd like to get your reflections and also where you think the political, cultural and legal landscape looks like going forward. Yeah, this is a massive uh, success uh, for the pro-life movement, and uh, it is deserving of celebration. Uh, one year this past weekend since the Dobbs decision overturning Roe versus Wade, many decades in the making, many activists out in the streets for many years, standing outside of abortion clinics, praying uh, and trying to achieve this result. It finally came, and it came because of that very guy we talked about a moment ago, the former president of the United States, Donald Trump. He was able to appoint three Supreme Court justices uh, to the court who were faithful to the Constitution uh, and turned the decision of abortion over to the states, made it a democratic process rather than one that's uh, supported, uh, decided by the court. Now, with that said, that's obviously not enough for pro-life people. They want to fight to save the lives of these babies. But in the end, it is something that was more democratic than what the court had created in the first place. Uh, and so now we're looking at one year since that decision. Over the weekend, uh, you saw Donald Trump. He did give a speech at the Faith, Faith and Freedom Coalition to a very warm audience, uh, very happy to have him. And he emphasized his role in getting the, getting the Supreme Court into this position. And now the issue of abortion is really going to be front and center as we head into the next uh, major presidential election. The reason for that is because uh, de Democrats don't have much, if anything, to run on economically. Uh, they want to run on a cultural issue, and they think that abortion is going to deliver them votes. They, they think it helped them in the midterms to be able to run against the Dobbs decision. They think it's going to help them in the presidential election. The job now for conservatives, for Republicans, is to remind voters that the average Democrat in power is completely out of step with the average American when it comes to the issue of abortion. Most Americans support restrictions on abortion after the first trimester. That is not the position of the mainstream Democrat Party right now. Uh, they support abortion up until birth. And that is a very extremist position, and Republicans would do well to remind Americans of that. Almost out of time, Vince, but, but I want, and want to mention this on a more positive note. Uh, the National Assessment of Educational Progress released uh, a fresh report last week showing the impact of COVID measures on learning. Um, on average, public school students lost 10 points in math and six points in reading since before the pandemic. But this is the good part I was going to mention. Catholic schools, however, saw no meaningful decline. So how do you make sense of that stark contrast? And what does this say about Catholic education? I think there are two factors for this. One is that the Catholic schools, by and large, stayed in school. The, stu the students, uh, for those Catholic schools that did close around the country, it was typically just in that early, that spring of 2020. By the fall, they were all reopened again. That is not the case with so many public schools in our country that stayed locked down and kept the kids out of the classroom. And that came at some massive detriment to so many children and set their education back meaningfully. Catholic school students, by and large, did not experience that. That's a good sign. One other piece here is the amount of time that's spent on actually educating children in, th in the things that they need to know. Catholic schools are focused on the spiritual well-being, yes, and especially the academic well-being. All right. Real quick, Vince, before I let you go, what else are you following? I'm following in particular this IRS whistleblower who is coming out with all of this information in the last week 
about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and the extent to which the United States Department of Justice has been interfering into an investigation into their finances. It's very troubling when you hear an IRS supervisor come out and say that on a routine basis, the Justice Department was shutting down any questions whatsoever about who the, quote, big guy was that's alleged to be Joe Biden. They wanted to stop down, stop any questions into, quote, dad. That is, once again, uh, Joe Biden. And there apparently was an effort to stop the U.S. attorney for the District of Delaware, David Weiss, from prosecuting the Bidens in multiple districts around the country and from him becoming a special counsel to pursue the Bidens, uh, the Biden case even further. These are deeply troubling allegations from a highly credible person. Uh, it deserves a lot more scrutiny, and uh, I intend to give it that. All right, Vince, we're going to leave it right there. Thank you so much, as always. Great to get your insights. Thank you.